Edgar Le Tulip had a tough life. He was 21 years old, but he had a mind of a 12 year old. This caused him to be extremely depressed and he attempted to take his own life. In September of 1986, he found himself in the hospital, recovering from an attempt on his own life. When he was released from hospital, he did not go to the group home he lived in, in Kitchener, Ontario. He left his medication and everything he owned behind. Edgar simply did not possess the skills needed to survive on his own, especially not without his medicine. When his mother found out he disappeared, she immediately contacted the police. The police discovered that Edgar had traveled to Niagara Falls using a bus. This immediately worried them that he was about to attempt to end his life again. No one at Niagara Falls saw Edgar, however, and he wasn't found. Posters were put up, but with no leads, the case went cold. In 1993, the police were contacted by a man who claimed he had seen Edgar. Unfortunately, the man in question was never found. In January of 2016, a man came forward claiming he was Edgar Le Tulip. The man lived in St. Catharines, Ontario, and was in his 50s. He also had the same developmental delays that Edgar had. His DNA was quickly tested, and it turned out that he was in fact Edgar. He had an accident and got amnesia. After that, he moved to a new town and started a new life. Eventually, he started having flashbacks of a previous life that he could not remember. The name Edgar Le Tulip sounded familiar to him. Together with his social worker, they looked through the internet and found his missing persons poster. The police believes that Edgar traveled to Niagara Falls, hit his head, and the injury gave him amnesia. The police does not want to disclose what life he has been leading in the last 30 years or what his assumed name was. I can confirm that he and his mother has reconciled and is making up for lost time. Timothy Carney disappeared on his way to church in 2004. He called his boss to say he would be late for a shift, but never showed up. His car was later found dumped by the roadside. Unfortunately, it contained no clues as to his whereabouts. His mother Phyllis and his father Ed devoted their lives to finding their missing son. They worked closely together with the Christian Foundation. The Christian Foundation was a national organization that helps to locate and bring home missing adults. It would take seven years after Timothy's disappearance before there was a breakthrough in the case. It turned out that Timothy was safe. He simply did not want to be found. Timothy had joined the Gospel Outreach. The Christian group is led by Pastor Jim Lefbridge and has previously been accused of poaching members from their families. His parents are still dedicated to get in contact with their son, even if he abandoned them. Lula Gillespie Miller had four young children. One day in 1974, Lula suddenly disappeared. All of the children went to live with Lula's mother, Emma Gillespie. Emma would put on her porch light every night hoping her daughter would return. Emma was a great grandmother, but the children missed their mother greatly, especially Tammy Miller. In 2010, Tammy searched for her mother online. She saw shocking articles about what could have possibly happened to her. She found a postcard that her mother had sent from Richmond, Virginia. Tammy also found out that Lula had transferred custody of the children to her mother. This meant that Lula most likely disappeared on her own accord. Tammy reached out to the Doe Network. They followed a paper trail and finally found Lula. She was living in Texas and was now 69 years old. Lula did not want to be found. She had a right to stay anonymous, but the police gave her Tammy's number for in case Lula wanted to call her. Lula did eventually call Tammy to tell her that she left them 
because she was too young to be a mother. Lula also told her that she would call her back when she had more time, which she never did. Tammy has stated that she will stop looking for her mother and that she will be moving on with her life. Emma passed away at the age of 91, two years before she would find out why her daughter was missing for 42 years. Arthur Gerald Jones worked as a broker and did really well for himself. He was married to Joanne Jones and was working at her father's company. The two of them had three children and bought a large house in a very affluent neighborhood. Jones had a gambling addiction and he lost a lot of money. At one point, Jones had to take a second mortgage on their home and he forged his wife's signature to do so. In the spring of 1979, one of Jones' friends passed away and this was said to take a huge toll on him. On May 10 of 1979, Jones told his wife that he had a work meeting and he would be back later in the day. His wife questioned him who he was meeting and why he was wearing casual clothes for a work meeting. Jones told her that the meeting was not in the business office and left in his car. He never made it back home. The police had some leads to go on. They heard about his gambling problems and thought it may be his hiding from someone he owes money to. They also found out that he has been lying to his wife about going to work. He hasn't been going to work for months. It would be 25 years after Jones disappeared before police would find a solid lead. A man named Clifton Goodenough noticed that while he was filing taxes that he owed a lot more than he expected. There were incomes from casinos on there that he had to pay taxes for. He made a complaint and found that a person by the name of Joseph Sandelli had attempted to use Clifton's social ID. The police looked into Joseph. It didn't take them long to realize it wasn't his real name. His real name was Arthur Gerald Jones. In the year he disappeared, he bought a fake ID for $800 from a colleague and assumed a new identity. He started working at a casino. He still has not given a reason for abandoning his family. Carlos Sanchez Ortiz de Salazar worked as a doctor in Spain. It looked like he had everything going for him, but Carlos was secretly suffering from depression. In 1996, Carlos didn't show up for work. His family and friends contacted the police since they were worried about him. In 2010, Carlos was presumed dead but his family refused to give up and kept searching for him. In 2015, there was a group of hikers in the woods of Maremma in Italy, just outside of Tuscany. They found a campsite in the middle of the woods. The hikers looked around the campsite and a man with a very long beard finally emerged. They scared the hikers and they left. Eventually they returned with a forest ranger. The ranger questioned the man. The man said he had been living in the woods since 1997. He showed his ID that had a name on it. The name of Carlos Sanchez Ortiz de Salazar. The ranger took photos of Carlos's identification. Carlos was not very pleased about being found and ran away. His whole family came to Italy when they heard the good news that he was found. His family says that they don't want to hold him back or try to talk him into going home. They just wanted to see him again and give him a hug. A hermit who was presumed dead after disappearing 20 years ago has been found alive and living in a forest in Tuscany. Carlos Sanchez Ortiz de Salazar, a doctor from Seville, dropped out in 1995 at the age of 26, suffering from depression. Two mushroom pickers discovered him by accident but say he's now vanished again.